the sum 444 four, four plus 888 equals the product 66666 six, six, six times. So first let's add up these guys. 444 four, four, and then 88 eight, all those numbers and when you do you will get 133332. Three, three, now they're saying this number is equal to 66666 six, 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 six times some number. So they want you to figure out that. Well, you can easily figure out that number by taking 133332 three, and dividing by that 66666. Six, six, six. And when you do, you will find that that question mark is equal to 2. And therefore, the answer is 8. The tens digit of 642 is the double of. Well, first of all, 642, what is the tens digit? The tens digit is this guy. This is the this would be the ones digit. This is the hundreds digit. So this is the tens digit. So four is the tens digit. Four is the double of what? Well, four is the double of two because it's two times two. So therefore, number two would be two, and that's B. Which sum represents a prime number? Okay. Well, first let's figure out the sums of these guys. This is two eighty three. That sum. This is 525, this is 682, and this is 801. So now let's see which one is prime. This is clearly divisible by 5, so that's not a prime. This is even, therefore divisible by 2, that's not a prime. All right, so now we got these left, and this is divisible by 3, and therefore this one, by process of elimination, would be the prime number. So number 3 is 8. 202 plus 2002 is equal to 2003 plus 2003 minus. Okay. Well, two zero, this first guy looks to me like it is uh, 2204. And this 203 plus 2003 is 2206. And then minus some question mark. So obviously that minus is, that question mark, I should say, is 2. So number 4, the answer is B. In the world of dog figure skating, if two hips equals one hop and two hops equals four hip hops, then eight hip hops equals how many hips? Two hips is one hop. And then uh, two hops, uh, hold on, let me see here. Let me write it here. Two hops is equal to four hip hops. And then finally, eight hip hops is equal to how many hips? How many hips, I guess, is the question. All right. Okay, so I guess we'll just use these equations. If we multiply this guy by two, this equation, this becomes two hops, and this becomes four hips. Okay, well... Let's see here. So that means two. if two hops is equal to four hips, then I guess this is two hips again on that equation, and that equals four hip hops. Okay, I hope, hope you're following that. <clears throat> so that means that the number of hips is equal to the number of hip hops. So eight hip hops would be equal to eight hips. And therefore, number five, the answer is C. And uh, number 6, 2 plus 4 plus 6, all squared is. Okay, well, that, first of all, is 12 squared, and that is 144. So we have to figure out which one of those answer choices is equivalent to 144. Well, you can calculate them, but some let, let's do it really quickly here, so I, without wasting too much time. So this looks like 6 times 2, that's 12, so it's obviously not that. Um, this one here is a very big number. That's 6 to the power of 4. This is the 6 to the power of 4, I think, would be greater than 144 because yeah, it would be 36 squared. So I'm pretty sure that's not it. The next one, uh, C, 6 squared, which is 36, times 4, 
and that's 144 so that's the one and just for the sake of completion uh, this one here is 4 plus 16 plus 36 and I think that would end up being less than 144 so C is the answer for number 6 Round 99.99 to the nearest hundredth. Okay. 99.99 to the nearest hundredth. Okay, that's a bit confusing, but let me explain why. Let's say you had a number 99.992, and I said round this, round this to the nearest hundredth. Okay, it would round to 99.99. Let's say I give you a number 99. 987 and I said round this to the nearest hundredth it would be 99.99 right this is this is what this is 99.99 is 99.990 and they're saying round it well it's already rounded to the nearest hundredth and that nearest hundredth is 99.99 so I think it, it might have even been a bit of a trick question so regardless the answer is C All right, so this equation here, 200 times 300 plus 20 times 30 plus 2 times 3 is equal to 2 times 3 times what? Okay, so let's do this here. Let's take this and write it over here. So the first one, I'm going to factor it, 2 times 3 times 100 times 100. Okay, plus the next guy, again, 2 times 3 times 10 times 10. And the next guy is already 2 times 3. And that whole thing is equal to 2 times 3 times something. Okay, so let's work with this. Let's factor out the 2 times 3. Then we will get 100 times 100, which I believe is 10,000. Then 10 times 10, which is 100. And then 1, and that is equal to 2 times 3, times something. So that something is really this guy in there. And that looks to me like 10101. One zero one zero one, and that be I believe is B. Each of the following is uh, each of the following sums is a factor of sixty six plus thirty three plus ninety nine. Except, well, first of all, what is thirty three plus sixty six plus ninety nine? That equals one ninety eight, and then we have to figure out is which of the fa following are factors of 198? This, first of all, let's figure out these sums. This is 6, this is 18, this is 9, and this is 27. Uh, 198, is it divisible by 6? The answer is yes, it's 33. 198, is it divisible by 18? The answer is yes, it's 11. 198, is it divisible by 9? The answer is yes, 22. 198, is it divisible by 27? The answer is 7.3, and therefore, no, it's not divisible because it's got to result in an integer. So therefore, number 9 is D. The additive inverse of a third is. Okay, what does additive inverse mean? It means something that you add to the number to give 0. That is what is an additive inverse. So let's just give a symbol there. Let's call it x, and therefore x is going to be negative one-third. So number 10, the answer is 8. What is the perimeter of the top of a square pizza box that just manages to hold a circular pizza whose radius is 70? So let's make a square box and let's attempt to draw a circle that just touches the edges. Okay, not the perfect circle but you understand. And then let's make the radius, and they're saying the radius is 70. Well, all the way across is the diameter, which would be double the radius, so 140. And what are they asking here? Uh, what is the perimeter? Ah, perimeter. So the perimeter of the top, so the whole way around. So that's 140, that's 140, and that's 140. So the perimeter would be 140 times 4, and that is 560. So that would be number 11 is D. Number 12. Well, we got this whole thing. 10 over 8 and, and so on. Well, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, well, what you can do is you can cross these out. 
eight crosses with that, six crosses with that, four crosses with that. Over on this side, same kind of thing, that eight crosses with that, six is crosses, four cross. So then all you're left with really is this 10 over two, this 10 and this two is equal to this two and that 10, and then multiplied by some number. Let's just call it x. So it looks to me like x, if you cross multiply, uh, well, actually, yeah, if you cross multiply, it looks like 5 times 5, and therefore x is 25. So that would mean number 12 is d. The average number of grams per burger in a burger bash burger is numerically equal, equal to the average number of days per year during the past four years. That number is nearest to. Well, in a four-year period, you'd have 365 days, and then you'd have the leap year, the fourth year, 366. So just add them up. You get 1461, and then divide by 4 to get the average, and you get 365.25. And that is B. Five times question mark equals five divided by two over six. So five times something is equal to five divided by two over six. So invert and multiply. Five times six over two, and six over two is three, so that means five times three is um, 15. So fi five times something is 15, so that something must be equal to three. And therefore number 14, the answer is B. Of the following numbers, which has the greatest tenth, tenth digit okay tenth all right so first let's write these out zero three zero seven three zero oops not zero three point zero seven three thirty point seven three and three oh seven point three okay now let's underline for each of these what is the tenth digit all right well the uh, tenth digit is this guy and the first one, this one, this one, and this one, and the subsequent. So we have three, zero, seven, and three, and of those numbers, which is the greatest? Well, the number that's greatest is this guy. So that would be for number 15, C. The diagonal of one square is the side of a second square, then the region in which these two squares overlap is. Okay, so let's see here. Let's draw the first square. And they're saying the diagonal of this is one side of the next guy. So the next square sort of is like this. You got it? And then they're saying, what is the region of overlap? Well, that's the region of overlap. And that, to me, looks like a triangle. And that would mean number 16 is A. What percent of the total value of 50 quarters is 50 dimes? Okay, so basically what they're saying is 50 dimes, which is 50 times 10 cents, over 50 quarters, which is 50 times 25 cents. So that really is just a 10 over 25 question, and I believe that's 40%. So 40% would be D for number 17. 999 times 1,000 minus 999 times 998. All right, so I'll, I'll factor out a 999. That'll be easier for me. And then I'm left with 1,000 and 998. So that looks to me like 999 times 2. And 999 times 2 is 9, 1998, 1998. Ooh, but they don't give you 1998. All right, so i got to figure out which one of these is equivalent to 1998. And I think that's B, this one right here. My friends and I each volunteered at a charity car wash from noon until 30 minutes before midnight. We each washed cars for how many minutes? So it looks to me like that was a total of 11 hours and 30 minutes. So they're saying how many minutes? Okay, so convert that whole thing to minutes. So it would be 11 times 60 plus 30. And that is 690. So 690, and therefore that's B. 
77 squared times 77 times 77 squared. All right. Uh, let's see here. 77 squared times 77 times 77, which is, well, let me just write it all out. 77 squared, that doesn't change. This is 77 squared, and then you're squaring it. So that looks like 77 squared times 77 to the power of 4, which is all 77 to the power of 6. Okay, so now we got to figure out which one of these is equivalent to that. Uh, that's 77 to the power of 5. That's 77 to the power of 5. That's 77 to the power of 6. And that's completely different. So C is the answer to number 20. 3 divided by 5 divided by 7. 3 divided by 5 divided by 7. Okay, so that would be 3 over 5 divided by 7. And then invert and multiply, so that would be 1 over 7. So that looks like 3 over 35. 3 over 35, and therefore number 21 is 8. Next one, uh, we have 1 minus a quarter plus 1 minus a half plus 1 minus a quarter. So 1 minus a quarter is 3 over 4. A half, uh, sorry, 1 minus a half is a half. And then 1 minus a quarter is 3 over a quarter. So common denominator, 3 plus 2 plus 3 all over 4. And that looks like 8 over 4. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, hold on. No, I was right. Some, sometimes it seems too easy to be true that you can get it so quickly. But no, I was right. 8 over 4, which is just 2. So number 22, the answer is D. The reciprocal of the quotient. So first, let's figure out what the quotient is. 3 divided by 1 over 6 is 3 times, one, uh, three times 6 when you invert and multiply, so that's 18. The reciprocal of that would be 1 over 18. Now, they are not giving me that, so I have to figure out which one of these is equivalent to that. The first one is 1 over 18. Yeah, so there you go. Immediately, I can get the answer. So number 23 is 8. What is the largest multiple of 2? That is a factor of 72. Well, first of all, 72, um, what are the factors? Factors of 72. Well, there's many. There's 1, there's 2, there's 3, and it kind of keeps on going, right? And the, all the way up to 72. So there's quite a few, but this is sort of the list, partial list. But they just want you to find the largest a multiple of 2 that's a factor. The largest factor is 72. Is 72 a multiple of 2? And the answer is yes. It is indeed a multiple of 2. So kind of a weird question. I'm not really sure why they worded it like that, but perhaps they just wanted to confuse you. So number 22 is 24 is D. If I have $10 in nickels and you have $7 in dimes, then I have how many more coins than you? Ten dollars in nickels means ten times point zero five, correct? So, oh wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, ten dollars. Ten dollars in nickels does not calculate that way. Divide, aha. Uh -huh. That's how many coins I would get. So this looks to me like two hundred coins, two hundred nickels in particular. Okay, and then the other person, whoever it is, you, has seven dollars in dimes. So that's seven divided by. Uh, 10 cents to figure out how many coins and that's 70 dimes. So therefore you've got to compare 70 to 200 and that's all, all obviously 140 more. So I have 100, oh sorry, sorry, <laughs> 130, 130 more coins. My math is not good today and that would mean C. The product of my three integers is odd. The sum must be. All right, so I just used uh, three numbers just, just to make it easy. Any three odd numbers. So I've got th th the product of my three integers is odd. Ooh, okay, so let's see what happens. Let's say I have even, even, and odd. Even, 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 and even. Even, odd, odd, and then odd, odd, odd. Let's see what happens. This gives me eight. This gives me... Uh, 12, this gives me 18, and this gives me 27. Now they're saying the product of my three integers is odd. The only scenario in which the product is odd is this guy, meaning that all three numbers are odd. 
Okay, so now let's add them because they want the sum. That would be 9, and 9 is an odd number. So that's pretty much how I would figure it out, and that would give me A as an answer. Root 64 minus root 9. Root 64 minus root 9 is 8 minus 3, and that is 5. 5 is not one of the answers, but let's see which is equivalent to that. And when I look at the answers, the equivalent is root 25, which is equal to 5. So C is the answer for number 27. If 345 symbol 54 is equal to 334 symbol 43, then symbol could represent. All right, well, let's see. 345 something 54 is equal to 334 something 43. Um, let's try, well, hmm. If I try addition, it'll be uh, 399, I believe. And that other one would be 377. So that didn't work. But I think if I put a, a, a minus symbol, it'll work. It'll be 291. And the other side is 291, yeah. Okay, so the, the negative, the subtraction symbol is the one that works. 4 over 10 of 40 is two is something percent of 4. Okay. Well, 4 over 10 of 40. Um, okay. First of all, let's just calculate that. That's um, 16. And then they're saying 16 is equal to what percentage of 4? Well, it looks like you have to quadruple it, right? So it would be 400% of 4. So that is D for number 29. What is the tens digit of the largest odd factor of 100 million? All right, so 100 million is equal to 10 to the power of 8. So if you break that up further, it's 2 to the power of 8 times 5 to the power of 8. Now 2, yeah. Now, they want the largest odd factor. If you want the largest odd factor, you have to completely remove all powers of 2 because any power of 2 would make it even. So you're just left with this guy here, 5 to the power of 8. And that is basically the, uh, the largest odd factor. Okay, we have, have to expand that. 5 to the power of 8 expanded is 390625, and they want the tens digit. And this is the tens digit right there, so 2. And therefore, number 30, the answer is B. The sum of nine consecutive integers is not always divisible by. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's see. X plus X plus 1 plus X plus 2. Nine consecutive integers, right? So X plus 3, X plus 4, X plus 5, X plus 6 x plus 7, and x plus 8. These are nine consecutive integers, and I've got to add uh, the sum, right? So that looks to me like 9x plus 36. Now that is divisible by 9, I'm pretty sure. Uh, hold on. No, 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 it's not. Well, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that means 9 times x plus 4. And then that also can be written as 3 times 3 times x plus 4. All right, so let's see. Is it divisible by 1? Sure, it's divisible by 1. Is it divisible by 3? Yes. Is it divisible by 6? No. And is it divisible by 9? Yes. So because they want the one that's not. So 31 would be C. How many tiles? Will rent a kid need to install a single row of square tiles, each with side length one along four edges of the floor in a 12 by 16 room? All right, let's draw this and see. So it'll be something like this, okay? So we got, it's 12 by a 16 room. So th this, these ones, obviously, since they're uh, side length one, those there would be 16 of them. Now, the sides, be careful, it's not 12 because we chopped off one on the top and bottom. So from here to here is really just 10. 
So it'll be 10 for this side and 10 for that side, so 10 and 10. So the total looks to me like uh, 32 plus 20, 52. So 52 is the answer, and that's 8. Uh, 0 0.4 squared is less than. 0 0.4 squared is less than. All right. Well, let's see. Let's figure this out. 0 0.4 squared, first of all, is equal to 0 0.16. 0 0.16. Now, let's compare them to A, B, and C. Uh, that's 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.4, and the very small number, uh, whatever it is, let's just put s for small this number compared to these it's greater than this one uh hold on one second let me just see if i'm great it's greater than this one it's less than this one and greater than that one so what do they want the one that's less than ah okay so it's less than this one so c is the answer a triangle with a perimeter of eight and integer side lengths must be okay perimeter of eight so we can't integer side lengths. Ah, so we can't divide it by 3. So it can't be equilateral. So that one's out. Uh, can it be right? Perimeter is 8, right? Well, 3, 4, 5, that perimeter would be bigger. That would be perimeter of 12. I, I don't think there's any other integer side lengths that sum up to 8. I don't think it's B. Isosceles, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. You can make, let's see, 3, 3, 2. Did that do it? That's 3, that's 3, that's 2. Yeah, there you go. So A is the answer to number 34. If 1 over 10 to the power of 100 is 0 .000, .000 dot 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 to 1, then the total number of times that the 0 appears to the right of the decimal point and left of the 1 is. Okay, well, I don't know, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of uh, pattern recognition. Let's just say when the exponent is 1, what is it? It's 0.1. And the number of uh, zeros, uh, what's the wording here? Right of the decimal point. Well, none in this case. Uh, 1 over the power of 10, 1 over 10 to the power of 2, that's 0 0.01. This time there's one zero to the right of the decimal point. Let's keep going here. 1 over 10 to the power of 3, that's 0 0.001, and that looks like 2. Okay, so I, I think I, I figured it out. This compared to this, looks like one less. So if you keep extrapolating 1 over 10 to the 100, whatever it is, 0 0.000 dot 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 all one, the number of zeros will be 99. So 35 is B. Lance sells 60 bikes each month. If one third of the racing bikes sells each month or one twelfth of all the bikes he sells each month, how many racing bikes does the Lance sell? All right, so of the 60 bikes, some of them he believes is going to be a fraction. Let me think about this for a second. So the number of racing bikes, RB, one-third of them, so RB divided by 3, is equivalent um, of all the bikes, one-twelfth of all the bikes. So all the bikes he sells is 60. So take a twelfth of that. So... I believe that is the right equation to uh, interpret the sentence. If I do this, that's going to be RB is 5 times 3, and therefore that's 15. So 15 is a choice B for number 36. A square and circle have the same at most how many points? Oh, boy. So let's see here. Let's draw a square. And, hmm, hmm. Let's see, I mean, it might be easier to just draw the circle first. And then let me see what's the maximum amount of, if I attempt to draw a square, that kind of cuts through. So how many points do they get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight intersection points, and I think that's the maximum. I'd, well, it's regardless of whether it's the maximum, it's the highest uh, answer choice. So therefore, I'm confident that the number is 37 question. The answer is D. 
I plan to give a total of three identical slices of pizza to Ali, Bob, and Carl. Each person will get zero, one, two, or three slices. And how many different ways can I distribute these three slices of pizza? All right, let's see. A, B, and C for Ali, Bob, and Carl. All right, let's see what we get here. Um, but the total has to be three, right? Okay, so zero, one, and two, zero, two, and one. Uh, that's one way. Zero, one, two, zero, two, one. And then the zero can go here. One, two, zero, two, one. All right. So that's the zero, two, one distribution. Then you can have a one, one, one. That adds up to three. Or you can have three, zero, zero. That will also add up to three. And I think that's it. So that's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 is the answer, number 38, therefore, is C. A perfect square is the square of an integer of the integers from 2 through 99. How many have at least one perfect square greater than 1? All right. Oh, boy. A perfect square is the square of an integer of the integers from 2 through 99. How many have at least one perfect square factor? So... Hmm. Well, first of all, let's list them. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. How long are we going to go here? 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared. Oh, okay, that's good. It's only from 2 to 99. All right. So this is 4, this is 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. 10 squared is 100, so that's outside of the range. Okay, so that's good. We don't have to deal with so many. All right, so then now what? Uh, multiples, right? Multiples is what we're looking at here. Have at least one perfect square factor. Okay. So a number will have a factor. Mm -hmm. Let's start with four. Let's just take it one step at a time. So a number will have four as a factor if it is a multiple of 4. So the number 4, 8, all the way to 96. Those numbers, that are they are all multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, and so on, all the way up to 96. And they will all have 4 as a factor. So that th these numbers all qualify. And how many are there? Uh, 96 divided by 4 is uh, 24. So there's 24 total numbers um, that are in this list. Okay, let's move on. So I'll move on to the 9 now. 9, same kind of story, 9, 18, and so on, all the way up to 99. Those numbers all have 9 as a factor. And how many numbers are there? I believe that would be 11, right? And then the next one is 16. So 16, 32, 64, Oh, hold on, I missed one. 48, 64, 80, and 81. But you, this is redundant because these are all included there. So I don't need to worry about that. Oh, that's interesting there because otherwise I have a whole bunch of double counts. So we don't need to worry about those guys. 25, okay, 25, 50, 75. Okay, there's only three of those guys. Okay, and then what's next here? 36. Okay, 36 I think we have already counted in this list right here. 49, however, that would give us unique ones. That's 2. And then the 64 I think I've already counted in this list. And the 81 I've counted in this list because that would be a multiple of 9. Okay, so we I think we got it. This, but I, I let me just add them first. So 24, 11, 3, and 2 is 30, is 40. Is the total is 40. But there's a, there's a, this is a difficult question because there's two numbers that we overcounted. And let me just think about that. Thir 36 is overcounted twice. 36 appears in this list. But 36 would also appear in that list, right? Because 36 is a multiple of 9 and 4. 
In fact, it's 4 times 9. Okay, so the number 36 has been overcounted, so we have to subtract that. And then the 72, I think, is also overcounted. 72 is 8 times 9 or 2 times 4 times 9, so it would also be in this these two lists. So that has to be subtracted. So therefore, the unique number is 38, and therefore number 39, the answer is B. All right, and the last one. The three hands of an accurate 12-hour clock make a total of how many complete revenue revolutions around the clock's face every 24 hours? Because it's a 12-hour clock, but they want you to figure out for 24 hours. So that means it would go around twice. So twice. So the first time, the hour hand would go once, and then another 12 hours. So the hour hand would go around twice, once for a.m. and once for p.m. The minute would go around uh, 2 times 12, correct? Yeah, because it's going to go around once every hour, and there's 24 hours, so 24. And then the second hand, it basically goes around... For every minute, it'll go, hmm, let me think about this. For every hour, uh, for every hour, there's 60 minutes, and for every minute, it goes around once. So it'd be 24 times 60. Yeah, so that's 1440. So I got to add these. So 1440 plus 24 plus 2 is 1440. Six, six. So therefore, that would be C for number 40.